Okay, back with another edition of Gaming Bugbears, and this one is entitled Why is the Monk Class in D&D? Most of the other classes from the Barbarian, the Wizard, are largely based on a Western fantasy idea. However, the Monk is based on Eastern martial arts, as seen through the lens of popular culture an esoteric wisdom that allows them to harden their bodies against blows. Now, I have no problem with an Eastern influence in games. However, to me, the inclusion of the monk in an otherwise Western influenced game seems as though at some point in the misty past of D&D, one of the game developers suddenly sat up and said, wait a minute guys, Kung Fu's quite cool. We've got to find a way to crowbar that in somehow. And I feel that just randomly jamming the monk in does the class a disservice. It's actually quite a potentially interesting class, but if you're going to include oriental style influences, then they should be in their own book. It also has monsters and other classes that fit into their own mythological niche. Now there was an oriental adventures book released for D&D 3rd edition, and I believe that was based on an edition for an earlier version of the game. Now this was a great book, because in addition to the monk and notes for adapting the standard classes, contained classes more suited to the setting, such as a samurai and a Shu Jenga. Now, here is my own copy of that book, and it's an excellent book. If you can find a copy of it, I highly recommend it, although I believe it is somewhat rare at the moment. Granted, Pathfinder does try and play down the martial arts connection of the monk a bit. And I suppose that were you to run a martial arts style campaign, the other classes could be given a fresh lick of paint and made to work. However, the monk class has always stuck out like a sore thumb amongst the mainly Western inspired other character classes, in my opinion. Personally, if I wanted to play a bare fisted fighter in a standard DD or Pathfinder game, I would probably go for a fighter or a ranger, or maybe even a paladin, with some carefully chosen feats and skills, or maybe even some halves rules if a GM was willing. Now, don't let this video fool you into thinking that I hate the monk class. Far from it. I just think the class deserves more pride of place in its own genre and setting rather than being tacked onto a standard D&D world, almost as an afterthought. Now, Japanese and Chinese mythology, like the many and various other rich forms of mythology throughout the world, is a detailed tapestry of interwoven ideas and stories. But the problem with this is they all rely on each other and build on elements present in other parts of the mythology. If you cut and paste a single element and take it in isolation, it has far less impact and makes far less sense than when it is contained within the rest of the mythology that it comes from. Well, that's my thoughts on the monk class. What do you think? Deal of the Monk class. Have you run a campaign set in a different mythological milieu than the standard westernized fantasy commonplace in D&D? If so, how did it go? Perhaps you've got some questions about the Monk class or the Oriental Adventures book. Whatever it is, write your responses in the comments box below and I look forward to reading what you have to say.